Is it possible? And this is just me speculating. Okay. I keep telling these people that I'm not offering them tax advice or financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a regular pizza guy. I'm an ex pizza guy. Right. But I tell them specifically that I think, and this is just speculating, and I don't think you can get in trouble when you speculate, okay? Uh, that I think this, these are nothing more than law firms that have been set up all over the country to act as the IRS, but they're being inundated with calls because the verdict is out on this institution, if you will, this illegal, you know, demonic institution, and People want to find out for themselves. So they're getting inundated. It doesn't matter whether they got a hundred law firms posing as the IRS or a thousand, they're getting inundated with calls that they can't answer. Is that a possibility? It is possible because they've hired a lot of outside or third party sources to do some of the work, especially in collections. So I have seen these letters saying, you know, this third party is now going to be doing the collecting of, of the taxes that you owe. So they are, hiring and i was appalled at that because who are these people and and they they have your slave surveillance number on your pay, i mean your social security number on your paperwork and they have your address and it's like you it, it, in the government not just the irs but in general always hires the lowest bidder and we know what happens when that when that occurs so i'm concerned about other people having our our private information in mass like that But before we get started, folks, make sure you hit the pause button. Okay, go down below. There's a Rumble link. Go over to Rumble and follow us over there. QFS1776.com is, without question, the holy grail of what's to come. Okay, T-shirts. You got to get yourself decorated. This way, people will ask you, what is XRP? What is the quantum financial system? What is this? What is that? And you send them where? To QFS1776.com where they need to immerse themselves because we're going to burn down this system down to the ground and out of the ashes will rise the Phoenix. There'll be nothing to go back to. Believe me when I tell you that unified TV will take over Netflix. We're bringing in the next genre of movie producers and storytellers and actors and actresses. And we're telling the story of how the world is going to be on earth as it is in heaven. Jasara Nasara is coming. Don't make, make no mistake about it. Gold and silver, gold and silver, right down below, promo code Mel Carmine. Make sure you use the promo code. Almost $8 billion in sales. We're direct to like a bunch of mints. We are the ones that can get you the gold and silver direct, directly to your door, okay, at the cheapest price. Don't even waste your time looking for a cheaper price. It doesn't exist. Also, our Telegram groups down below. If you want to learn what's coming and you're sort of a little scared, I understand. Believe me, I was there too at one point. Uh, our patriots are literally waiting for your room. And if you need more than $10,000 worth of XRP or a million dollars worth of XRP, you come see me. Send me an email at QFS1776 at Gmail. And well, first of all, I'd like to thank Yvonne for introducing me to you. Uh, Yvonne is a, uh, like a sister from another mister, you know. Uh, and I got to tell you, I, I followed your story, Sherry. Uh, if you guys don't know who she is, she is a legend. Uh, Basically, she saw an ad in the USA Today. It was a full page ad. And it said that if anybody could find a law that obligates anybody to pay an income tax on wages earned, that, you know, they would give her a $50,000 reward. Well, guess what? She worked for the IRS and she she actually answered that challenge. She was featured in a movie uh, called America from Freedom to Fascism, which, you know, millions and millions of views worldwide. And um, Aaron Russo, who I had the pleasure to speak with about five, six times before he passed, unfortunately. And uh, what an incredible story. She answered that specific ad saying, you know, I'm going to find the law. I'm going to show them the law. I'm going to make my $50,000 bounty. I'm going to pay some debts. I'm going to go on vacation and I'm going to go back to work with the IRS. That never happened. Correct. Correct. I actually wasn't working for the IRS anymore. I quit. And I think that's when people started to give me that information. Nobody talked to me about it. I think they were afraid. Mm -hmm. So I worked for them from 88 to 95. And between like 96 and 2000, 
I was getting whispers about the income tax being misrepresented and misapplied to the American people. But it was in 2000 that Bill Conklin put that ad in the USA Today. And that's when I, I went after the money. I was I had a CPA firm at the time. So I still had all my codes and regulations from when I was still working for the IRS. But I also had information from Bill Conklin and the ad that we, the people foundation for constitutional education put out in that USA Today ad. It was it was more than that. It was also Joe Bannister's report where he went out and did the research and couldn't find a law that required us to file and pay. So I ordered Joe's books and uh, I told Joe in the letter that I sent him with the check that I was a former IRS agent researching and he called me one night and that's when we kind of became buddies. Wow, interesting. Look, you've seen the videos of Nancy Drew, Richard Citizen Journalist. They're out there filming in Washington, in Maryland, everywhere where there's IRS buildings or Federal Reserve buildings and everything is shut down. Do you find it a little bit ironic that everything looks like a ghost town and the guys that are supposedly running stuff may not may or may not be them or may maybe actors or maybe clones or maybe something? The masks are wrinkling, the years are different. This guy's lefty, the other guy's righty. You know, there's too many anomalies that you can't just sweep under the rug and say, you know, no, you know, it's all a conspiracy theory. But bullshit. Right. Uh, what's the difference between a conspiracy and a strategy? There's a strategy going on, and it, it, it has to do with making us sick, broke, uninformed, and fearful. And we have to do something about that. I, I see these videos. I don't doubt these videos. I don't spend a lot of time looking at them because I know I need to spend my time preparing for whatever it is that they're trying to put on us. Absolutely. You know, how did how did you get cast into the movie or the documentary American from Freedom to Fascism? Tell us a little bit about that story, if you don't mind. OK, so after Joe Bannister called me there, he was already in touch with the We the People Foundation and people were getting in touch and and uh combining their knowledge. So Joe called me back one day and said, hey, uh, we want to, somebody wants to fly you out to Catalina Island and we want to have a big meeting. And we had a meeting. Joe was there and also John Turner. John Turner was the former IRS collections officer. So the three branches of the government that were represented, of the IRS that were represented were, I was an a agent, IRS agent, uh, Joe was criminal investigation and John was collections. And we went out there, by the way, we haven't spoken to John. He has disappeared off the face of the earth. Joe and I both have tried to contact John and, and we have not been able to contact him for, he lived in paradise, California, that place that got blown up by the laser or whatever, but we, mm -hmm. we can't find him now. But anyway, we were out on Catalina Island and this was 2000. It was the year 2000. And We the People Foundation was given uh, some funds to put some more ads in the USA Today. So then they put an ad in there and said, what do these three people have in common? And it had me, Joe, and John. They're all former IRS employees who have done the research and can't find the law. And that's when it was on. That's actually when people started to gravitate. There's so many people, Mel, that have done the research. And the this whole thing about it being voluntary and then Title 27 having law, but not Title 26. There's no definition of income. All of these things started coming out. And once Aaron got a hold to it, he asked all of us to come out to Hollywood. So we all at different times came out to do this movie. I stayed out there for about a whole day and had a nice time, did the interview. But once the movie got out, that's when we became more than just low flying gnats on the radar screen. And they started trying to shut us down. Sure. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm pretty sure if there's anybody who's qualified to know the answer to this question, it would definitely be you. Where is the IRS registered as a corporation? Puerto Rico. Yes. I've been there. They are not even a federal branch of the government. Am I correct? You're correct. And when I, I got called for jury duty one time and I was trying to get off jury duty and I was telling the judge that I was a federal agent and he told me, no, I wasn't. That's when, that was my first clue. Gotcha. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you know the answer. A lot of people don't know that the uh, IRS is registered in Puerto Rico as a corporation. And there are all corporations. If the Federal Reserve is a corporation, the the uh, the the Justice Department. These are all 
corporations that are registered outside of the United States. They have nothing to do with the federal government. They've been put in place or have been elected to be put in place to make our life a living hell. And they've done a pretty good job at that. Um, so, you know, my question to you is, are we moving into a different era? Are we moving into an era where the IRS is completely gone? So look, I got, you know, hundreds of thousands of people at this point worldwide that know who the pizza guy is. And I, God knows my mom and my dad and myself, when we own the pizza shops, we paid our fair share of taxes as much as we can, you know, get away with whatever. But the reality is we were paying into an illegal system. So hopefully we get some of that money back. Right. Right. That's so do you see, do you see us disappearing the IRS completely and entirely once this dude gets back right here? I don't know the answer to that question. I was hoping that that would happen before, but there are other forces involved. And I see a huge battle going on, Mel. On the one side, they're continuing to dumb down the people of the United States with the government school system, I mean, the, in the government indoctrination system. And then on the other side, they're continuing to take our resources. So those of us who have some sense and some semblance of what's going on, they try to uh, bootstrap us so we don't have any money so that we can't get the word out and we can't do the things that need to be done. So I do see a lot more people waking up as the years go by. I get calls, I get you know, texts and emails from people, former military, all the way to doctors and everybody saying, you know what, I'm, I found out, even IRS agents. There are IRS agents that are that have retired and IRS agents that are still there that have contacted me and said, you know, I know this thing is a fraud. The ones that are still there, it's like, I have to stay here because I wouldn't make, I, I can't make this much money anywhere else. That's a whole nother story, but they make, you know, 100,000, two, 300,000. They make a lot of money there. And if they went out into the marketplace to do the same job, they would make about a third of what they make. So some of them, you know, they feel like they want to stay. Some of them have quit. But yes, I, I think people are waking up, but I'm not sure what's going on uh, behind the curtain concerning getting rid of the insidious representatives of Satan, better known as the IRS. Wow. What do you make of the fact that because of my position, and it's become a pretty incredible position, uh, I never thought I'd be in this position, but I am. Uh, what do you make of the fact that there are people calling me from all over the United States saying, Mel, I've been on the phone calling a number. It all seems that, you know, the, the recording messages, it looks like I am calling the IRS only to be put on hold for an hour, two hours, only to be hung up. And this has happened to me four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, et cetera. What do you make of that? What I make of it, and it's happening to my clients also, unfortunately, these people don't want to go back to work. They're fighting. There are even lawsuits that they're saying, oh, I don't want to go back into that service center. A service center is a, a gigantic IRS warehouse where you got thousands of people, you know, sitting at cubicles, either processing returns or looking them over. And I want to tell this crazy story that is true. They said it's not true, um, but it's true because it happened when I was still there they had quotas for people that they hired like part-time during tax season to get these tax tax returns processed. And somebody got the, the smart idea because they couldn't keep up to put the tax returns up in the ceiling tiles. So one person started doing it, somebody else saw somebody else. And all of a sudden, when at the end of the day, when they didn't have as many processes as they were supposed to, they were putting up in, in the ceiling tiles. And finally, the ceiling tiles <laughs> fell down. <laughs> And a whole bunch of returns came down and, you know, it was a, it was a hot mess. And I think this was in Philadelphia, but uh, these people don't want to work. They don't want to go back into, for regardless of whether it's really fear of getting sick or they just got a taste of being at home like us entrepreneurs, regardless of whatever it was, they don't want to go back. They're not in the office that you, you can't get through. Yeah, that's exactly what I keep telling. Is it possible? And this is just me speculating. Okay. I keep telling these people that I'm not offering them tax advice or financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a regular pizza guy. I'm an ex-pizza guy, right? But I tell them 
specifically that I think, and this is just speculating, and I don't think you can get in trouble when you speculate, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, that I think this these are nothing more than law firms that have been set up all over the country to act as the IRS, but they're being inundated with calls because the verdict is out on this institution, if you will, this illegal, you know, demonic institution, and people want to find out for themselves. So they're getting inundated. It doesn't matter whether they got 100 law firms posing as the IRS or 1,000. They're getting inundated with calls that they can't answer. Is that a possibility? It is possible because they've hired a lot of outside or third party sources to do some of the work, especially in collections. So I have seen these letters saying, you know, this third party is now going to be doing the collecting of, of the taxes that you owe. So they are hiring. And I was appalled at that because who are these people? And and they they have your slave surveillance number on your, pay, I mean, your social security number on your paperwork. And they have your address and it's like you it, it, in the government, not just the IRS, but in general, always hires the lowest bidder. And we know what happens when that when that occurs. So I'm concerned about other people having our our private information in mass like that. Right. You've seen the videos. I'm sure they come across your desk just like the way they come across my desk. Uh, Donald Trump saying Joe is shot. Joe is shot. Who is this guy? He's a, he's not home. You hear him saying these things where basically he's dropping breadcrumbs to the American people. Now, I understand that there's a new documentary and you're in this one as well. And it's the same cast of characters, pretty much like uh, America from freedom to fascism. Can you tell us a little bit about this documentary? Is it out or is it coming out? So it's coming out. They had a premiere last weekend and it's called Slave Nation. Mm. The directors of this documentary also did um, the, the documentary called Died Suddenly. So I believe they told me that they're going to release it and it's not they're going to you're not going to have to pay for it. It's going to come out, I believe, on Rumble and then you're going to be able to see it just like you did with Died Suddenly. So within the next two weeks, I feel like it'll probably come out. I've been getting calls and emails concerning the fact that it came out great. I was the last one that they interviewed the week of. January 15th, the weekend of January 15th. And so they got it edited really quickly and they got it out. So it's called Slave Nation. And I would look for it. If you're going to look for it, I would look for it like on Rumble. Cool. Now you are, I'm sure, well, if you hang out with Yvonne, my good friend, Yvonne, you got, you got to, you got to know about. That's my sister. <laughs> That's, but that, absolutely. She's amazing. Uh, you got to know about the QFS and the XRP, which is going to be the final Bitcoin, Nisara and Jasara. What do you know about Nassar and Jassar? What is your take on it? I know that I've had, you know, many people have come on my show with debt forgiveness, with documentation showing the proof that the, the loans were forgiven, student loans, mortgages, et cetera, et cetera, car loans. Uh, what do you make of all of this? Do you think the Nassara is a myth or do you think Nassara is a real deal and we're going to see it manifest here in the next year or two? Well, I'm praying the, the latter. I, I haven't seen it. I don't I don't discount anything as a myth. I'm not that person that's going to have a knee jerk reaction just because somebody is parroting some information about something. I know that, you know, XRP is a thing and uh, cryptocurrency in general is something that fears them because they don't have control over it. So I know that they are strategizing in some hot, stinky room trying to make sure that all of these things don't come to pass for us. Uh, the ones that say that they have gotten the debt elimination, I'm just uh, praying and, and hoping that they give us the information to get that done also. Absolutely. Well, you know, look, at the end of the day, uh, there's definitely, it's not George Soros and Klaus Schwab on the battlefield unopposed, okay? Someone is opposing them. There is, this is a battle of good and evil. There's got to be a, a, a good force on that battlefield beating their pants off and we are beating their pants off, but we can't get laxy daisy. We can't get complacent. Obviously we've got to keep the pressure on guys like me who are in the front lines. We know this, uh, you know, so you see us winning anytime soon. Do you think this could be dragged on for another four or five years? I really don't think that it's going to last another four or five years. I think it's bottlenecking right now because there's velocity because people are learning the truth. These young people, the millennials and the ones after them, 
Gen Xers or Zers or whoever these these kids are, they're realizing some things. They're realizing that they've been led down the wrong path and it's a dead end. They're being told that they need to get a college education, which is another debt shackle, and get a job. And the job that they got is not supporting the student loan that they took out. And they're they're stepping back and, and looking at this thing like, wait a minute now, I have to do something about my life. And they start doing research and it's the kids. It seems like where there are revolutions all over the all over the world, Mel, it was the yeah. kids that started it. So these these kids are saying, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to work a job and pay into the social security system so that when I get to be 50, they say, it, you know, I have to be 80 to get it. They're not doing this. So they're they're coming up with alternatives. And a lot of them, be honest with you, they're teaching us older people what to do in, in uh, alternative ways. But this is not working. I, I do believe there's going to be a collapse before four years. I just don't think we're going to make it based on the things that I'm seeing, based on the 17,000 people coming across the border every day, not checked for COVID, not checked for disease, coming over from places like China, walking straight across and giving these uh our so-called border control the high five. And then when they get over here, they're beating up police and putting up the finger. This is not sustainable, not for five years, Mel. Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Um, and, but I think that also by the same token, this guy here happens to be a little bit like too cool for school. You know what I mean? He's like cool as a cucumber. He's playing golf. He's staying fit. He's got uh, the technology we have at stayingalive.com, alive with two eyes in Cape Canaveral around his bed. Okay. That has been confirmed. Okay. So, I mean, it, the guy, look, his cognitive dissonance, it, it, I mean, he is, he is spot on. I mean, he's had really literally a test recently and the doctor said, Hey, your brain is firing on all cylinders. Unlike the other guy, whether he's a clone or whatever he is. Right. Um, so, but I think he's going to be the one that leads us. But do you think this is going to be a slow rolling out? Or do you think they're just going to collapse everything and let the dust settles where it settles and give us the flying cars and give us the life extension technology and give the power back to the people, all of that? Or do you think it's going to be a 10, 12, 15 year process? I feel like it's going to be gradually, then suddenly. And I think we're about at the end of the gradually because it's just too much happening everywhere. You get the farmers pouring manure on the on, in, in uh, France, all over the government buildings and these government people's homes. You got things going on in, in uh, Holland and it's everywhere. Now, if you watch the lamestream media, you're not gonna see this because the people that are around me, they have no idea what I'm talking about. But watching people like you and others, I know that the worldwide it's already started and I just don't think it's gonna last that much longer. Yeah. What do you think? What do you make of this BRICS nation, BRICS, the, the BRICS nations that are coming together? Is that going to be part of Nasara? Do you think or do you think that's maybe a deep state in Nasara? Are they trying to mimic Nasara to get people confused with their central bank digital currency? I don't think you would do too well, doctor, walking down the street with a social score. I think your social score is going to be like 17,000 below zero. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. I couldn't go to the public restroom and get toilet paper. I, li I literally saw a video where in China, you're, if your credit score is bad then you won't be able to use tissue at the at the public toilets or wherever they are. And, it, and it's a crazy. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't have a, a good social score at all. I think that BRICS is scaring the bejesus out of, you know, the these folks over here and, you know, they can do what they want to do. It's, they they have. Over the years been able to curtail any movement to bring us away from the dollar, make the dollar no longer the uh, currency, the, the standard currency. Gold and silver have always been a medium of exchange for over 5,000 years. And every time some leader comes up with something other than the dollar, they get squashed. But now that you have these bricks, they're too powerful. So their technology may not be at a point where they can get a digital currency together really good yet, but they have alternatives because from what I understand, they've been trading in their currency. 
So, you know, Brenton Woods is about dead. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, look, the lawsuit with Ripple, we knew we were going to win this lawsuit. That was it was it was evident. The, the writing was on the wall. Uh, I believe wholeheartedly that, you know, Jamie Dimond, uh, you know, Chase uh, Bank, whatever, the, these big uh, banking uh, conglomerates, they went to the SEC and their cronies on in, in the government, uh, whatever, if you want to call that government. These are just guys with a bunch of badges and guns, just like the IRS. And they don't really belong to the government, and they they're enforcing laws that they don't have any jurisdiction of. Um, they went there and they said, "Hey, we got to slow down this whole thing." Uh, so they they created this central bank digital currency. Now I'm pretty sure you know enough about you know blockchain technology to be dangerous. You know that the blockchain does not call for another a toll on a highway. If I can pay you direct, and you can pay me direct in XRP, XLM, XDC. Why in the world do we need a central bank digital currency? So they went, they slapped the lawsuit, slowed it down, manipulate every market to hell, okay? Because we know it's worth a lot more than 50 cents. Uh, and, you know, uh, and here we are, uh, and they're still talking central bank digital currency. A lot of the XRP Army 1.0, they're reporting the news as if they are, you know, uh, mainstream, you know, ma mainstream, right? Uh, I don't believe the central bank digital currency has a place where do you stand on that do you agree do you disagree it does not have a place i'm with you 100 percent. it's it's a, a mode of control over us mm -hmm. if if you're going to control the the currency then you can control where i can travel what i can eat and we have unalienable rights male not inalienable unalienable rights from god which means it can't be leaned Right. And when you have a digital currency and you're told that you've got to spend all of this that's in here by the end of the week or you're going to lose it or you can't spend any more on chocolate because you've you've had too much chocolate, that's another form of slavery. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and the, the little saying that I have in my office is what I said in that movie, if stealing 100% of the product of someone's labor is slavery, at what percentage is it not slavery? I don't want to be a slave. I mean, my ancestors were slaves. Your ancestors, everybody was a slave. We don't, we're not going back there. Yeah, no, we're about to break, you know, free of these shackles uh, once and for all. There's no question about it. You you have to be blind, de deaf, and stupid not to be able to see it. But you and I, I think, live in the same movie theater. We're watching the same movie. We're eating the same popcorn, et cetera. I, I know you know about the, the Q movement, et cetera. I think the Q movement, the army, uh, Trump, uh, the low-lying satellites, uh, Elon Musk, uh, you know, Starlink, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. It's all connected. Uh, and we have to wait for this movie to sort of play out. They have to crash the system. They have yes. to bring they have to bring the building down and, and on that lot, when they bring the building down, they have to build something new. That's something new. Whether you call it Nasara or Jasara or whether it's got the same characteristics, but, you know, the acronym fits, right? So we're going to see. I mean, uh, it, it's a very interesting time to be alive, to say the least. Uh, you know, uh, where we go from here is, you know, pure speculation on a lot of people's parts. A lot of people saying, hey, the revaluation of wealth is going to happen, you know, tomorrow. You've seen all these clowns out there. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and many tomorrows and, and weeks and months come and nothing happens. Because I do believe, and I think you'll agree with me, this guy needs to get back. I believe that, and, and they talk about cleaning the swamp. And I'm, I'm, I like Waffle House. It's my comfort food. And there was a Waffle House near my house and it closed down. And I was like, what is going on? So I finally got in touch with somebody that says, hey, it's going to open back up, but they have to tear it down because the rats got to the point where they built so many tunnels under the Waffle House that there was no way to keep patching that up. So they literally took that Waffle House to the ground and rebuilt that Waffle House. And that's what we're going to have to have. We're going to have to have a new Waffle House because there are too many rats out there. And I'm tired of smelling them and I'm tired of seeing them and I'm tired of them biting my feet. Do you think that when it all goes down, uh, I, I again, this is speculation on my part, and you may either agree with potentially something that's so highly plausible that it can become factual, that the army needs to step in and storm the CNNs and the Fox News and all the 
mainstream media, and maybe it's not going to be Anderson Pooper reporting the news or Wolfowitz or whatever these guys, all these names. I don't, I don't even, I've, I've shut that darn thing down, you know, decades ago. Um, I, I think because you have to report it through the mainstream in order for people to be able to buy it, because even if it's somebody different, but they're still sitting in a chair and it still says central, you know, CNN, right. Or it says Fox because it came through there. They say, Oh yeah, it's believable because it came through there. We can believe the arrest. We can believe what's going on because it came through CNN. We came through Fox. Is that a possibility? Uh, it is a possibility. I think it'll come another way. I think that, after COVID, especially, and with all this, the information that's coming out about that and the the drug addict's laptop and all these other things, people who would normally just stick to the CNNs of the world are starting to look for alternative media. They're asking me, well, what should I be looking at? Because, you know, they've told us these lies and they said I wasn't going to get COVID and I got COVID three times and you know, so there, there, there are people out there that are waking up and they're looking at alternative media like you. Uh, I do think that there's still going to be a hardline group of people that are going to sit there and believe everything they see on CNN. But I think they're lost already. I think that that crew's gone. Yeah, yeah. There's no question about it. Look, you know, uh, Trump, Trump cannot come back fast enough. And people always complain to me, Mel. There are people killing themselves. There are people committing suicide. There are people losing their lives. There are people, you know, X, Y, and Z doing this, doing that. And I always say the same thing. I said, you know, we cannot be responsible for those people if they don't want to pay attention. They have to, and we're, we're in a war. War has casualties. And, and, and the spoils of, of, the, of this war, whether it's us taking over CNN and putting some real news anchors in there for the first time in, you know, decades, uh, Fox News and all of these, because the spoils of war go to the victor, right? We'll probably take over, uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Netflix and, and, you know, all of it because we win the war. If they won, they can continue with their shenanigans, but we know that they're not winning. Look, the election debacle, let's call it that because we can't say certain words here. As you know, we're being watched, monitored, controlled, et cetera, stifled, et cetera. You know, everybody in the world at this point understands that this election was, it starts with that letter F that we, there's a lot of words that start with the letter F, but you know which one we're talking about. It ends with the letter D, okay? It was, you know, so do you think that we're going to allow in America the people that literally robbed this thing right from underneath our feet the American people, right? And we know who robbed the bank. We know exactly how much money they stole. We know exactly where they ended up. We know what kind of car they drove. We know the color of the car. We know how many people were in the car. We know everything about the crime scene. And we're just going to leave it alone in America? Really? I think that there are enough people that are growing a couple that they're not going to let anything happen that's going to do the damage that happened to us in 2000 and 2001. Um, 2020 was a thief for me in my life and so many other people's lives. So people are aware that there's something happening. You, you're going to have those those other people that are saying, oh, you know, they, they, it, they, it wasn't, it was something that was real and this person got more votes than anybody else ever got. Yeah. And there was nothing going on wrong. The other side is just angry. But right. I, I don't know how to explain the suitcases that came from up under the table after seven o'clock that night right. that are Everything. on camera. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know how, how to explain that. Mules? How about the movie 2000 Mules? I'm sure you watched that at least once. I haven't heard of it. I'm not a, I, I'm, I'm a recluse. I don't even have TV. I do have a television set, but mm -hmm. it's not been on for, I think maybe once this year. And my granddaughter was here watching a little video. I'm just not, I am too focused on getting prepared for whatever it is they have for us. I have, I've missed a lot of things. My friends send me things. So if, if you'd send me that, I will definitely watch it. 2000 mules is on rumble. Okay. Okay. It's free of charge. Uh, 
the evidence, Dr. Sherry, is so overwhelming. It is irrefutable. It is irrevocable. It is a slam and dunk situation. I'm an extremist. I don't know if you could tell. Okay? <laughs> All right. I would literally sanction every sheriff in the country. I would rent the stadium. I would put them inside the stadium. I would lock down the stadium. I would confiscate their cell phones and say, now pay attention. Because somebody needs to go away here as in forever. These are treasonous crimes of the highest order. Somebody needs to pay with their lives. Now, we're going to roll the movie. And if you gentlemen, you sheriffs that run the country, law and order, if you don't see what the American people see, if you don't come to a conclusive conclusion of what this is, we are arresting you. We're going to put you away for 25 years. Are you feeling me? That's the way the pizza guy would do it. But on the other other side, they're being done like that now. That's why I feel like a whole bunch of these people know what's going on, but they're being threatened from the other side. And some people like us, Mel, we're not going to back down to a threat. But no. some people want to stay in their comfort zone. They want to stay in their night, like the Matrix. The guy that that wanted to go back in the Matrix so bad that he betrayed his, and killed his friends because he wanted to say, I have people that, COVID op opened up a lot of things uh, as far as the way people think and who was really your friend and who was really knowledgeable. And there are a lot of people that would rather stay in their comfort zones, their circle of sameness. They will fight you if you try to get them out of their comfort zones. And these are the people that are, are slowing up what I consider to be the revolution. I think you hit the nail on the head, doctor. The people are afraid of the unknown. They don't have the brain power. They don't have the pineal gland clean enough to be able to act as a satellite dish to, to tap into source. And they can't see two inches in front of their nose, even though, even though the truth is right there. Well, there's, you know, I'm I'm originally from Detroit, but I picked up a whole lot of Southern ways and we make up words down here. And so, of course, you know, the, the word ignorant and ignorant means that you don't know, but ignorant means that you don't want to know. And we have millions of ignorant people that don't want to know the truth, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil, so that they can stay in their comfort zone with their little nice houses and their little nice cars and whatever it is they think they have that they don't really have. And they're going to find out soon enough that they don't have it. Right. Exactly. But I, I, I really believe uh, wholeheartedly that Donald Trump and I could be dead wrong and I might have to get plastic surgery and change my name and, you know, I get a different identity and all that kind of stuff from the embarrassment. But I don't believe that that's going to take place. I believe wholeheartedly that I'm going to be proven right. I know you're going to be proven right. I know a lot of us will be proven right that this thing has to end on a positive note. America was supposed to be the last domino to fall in order for communism to take place, except they never realized that the domino weighs 900 trillion pounds mm -hmm. because of these. And every time they threaten these, we go out and get more of these. Right. That's, that's key. And we need to discuss that. That's key to this whole situation. All of the things that are going on, uh, about those and who's using them and who's getting them and who's on medication and who's MK and all these other things to make sure, because all these other countries that I see that I saw during 2020, 21 acquiescing to all of the foolishness and you can't go across this border to see your grandma and all this other stuff. Those people lost their ability to take care of themselves a long time ago and that's one of the last stands, as a matter of fact, that we here in the States have, and they're trying their best to take that away. And when we, if we lose that, then we just might as well lay down like a puppy dog. Yeah, well, let me ask you, not to switch gears on you, but I'm going to switch gears on you. That's okay. Uh, Yvonne and I talk regularly, and not as much as I'd like to, because I'm a pretty busy guy. She knows that. And I, she respects her, the fact that I'm busy, but she owns, she's very big on the, on the reevaluation of wealth. She's very big on the fact 
uh, that the Zims and the Dinars and the you know Zimbabwe dollars and all that all this money is going to reevaluate because yeah they are part of the monetary system on this planet. So if there's going to be rule, new rules that's going to change the the level playing field into something that's more fair, it's only fair that that mon those monetary systems also revalue along with everything else. And if it's going to be backed by gold or silver, we will know. Someone will make that announcement. Do you own any Zims or Dinars, doctor? Yes, I do. There you go. And, and RXP. And XRP. XRP, I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't, don't be surprised. Hey, listen, don't be shocked. I, I called it XRM. My, my wife asked me to buy some <laughs> years ago, many, yeah. many years ago. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I gave her 50 bucks just to get rid of her. And I said, did you get some of that XRM? She goes, no, it's XRP. And yes, I did. She said, you know, that's how we got started many years. We, I, we're actually coming up on our anniversary. May 18th will be nine years in this, in this crazy, you know, digital asset world. I call it digital asset because, you know, uh, they, they, they do a play on words on us. You know, uh, when we did the, the COVID thing, we had to be six feet apart. Why six? Why not seven? Why not eight? Why not three? Six, 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 six. Okay. Got it? Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then if they bury you, right? If you, took that, if you took that medical procedure that most of us who are smart didn't want to take, right. where do you go? You go six feet under. Right. It's all subliminal. Why the, 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 the uh, temperature the taking when you're going to the supermarket here from a guy who's making $14 an hour, he's taking my temperature. Are you kidding me? Okay. Yeah. Right here. Why? Why here? Why not somewhere else? Yes. Because that's where they wanted to implant the chip that's got your information, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So it's all programming and people don't see this. Right. And, they don't want to see it, Mel. They, they, it's, it's, it's slapping them in the face, but they don't want to see it because they don't, that cognitive dissonance is so real. They don't want to know that because if they, if they see these things and they process these things, they're going to know that they've been had from a long time ago and they don't want to believe that. They don't want to. They don't want to process the fact that they've been programmed. They don't want. They to don't want to leave that. the matrix. They're normal. They want to leave the matrix. They want to stay in the matrix. Yes. They want to yes. be enslaved forever. Yes. Leave everything status quo. Don't make any waves, Mel. Right. Don't make you know? any waves, Gary. Exactly. Okay. It's crazy, but that's what it is. I hate. I. I would love to disagree with you, but I can't. You know. Yeah. Man, I, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, uh, Yvonne has put us together. And I'm sure this is probably not going to be the last interview. Actually, I would love to do another one with you and Joe Bannister at the same time. That would be explosive. Okay, okay. You know, you think maybe you could put a bug in his ear? I can. And definitely maybe after the movie's out, because I will. I want to see the movie and then I'll, you know, have some commentary about it and whatnot. So I'll, yeah. I'll check into it since he, he actually emailed me either yesterday or today. And someone mm -hmm. else got in touch with me today. So I want to go and see where we're going to be able to watch Slave Nation. Yeah. For you, for those of you folks, I've been at this for 34 years. Okay. A long, long time. Okay. I've been awake for a very long time. I've been waiting for you guys for 34 years to try and come and And some of them, I'm telling you right now, the ones that are newly awake that have really taken to this and dove real deep head first sound like they've been awake for at least 20 years. They, they got PhDs on this stuff already. And they're only awake for two, three years. Amazing. Okay. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, we have the Staying Alive uh, Healing Center in Cape Canaveral, 166 Center Street in Cape Canaveral. Right next to the Wizard of Oz Museum. Now, you know what the Wizard of Oz has got to do with the money? I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I'm the only center, right, healing center on Center Street. And I'm next to a building that is the number is Seven seven zero seven. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Yes. Okay. What are the chances of that? Okay. We put the technology. You can have, there's a sign way at the end that says you can go visit the manatees. And I talked to all the neighbors and they said, Mel, there was never more than five or six manatees here at one time. Because of our technology, we cancel out the 5G tower. As a matter of fact, I want to get uh, Richard Citizen Journalist to go there with his equipment because he's done this where there's other centers that are next to the, tow the towers, the 5G towers, and there's no radiation coming off that tower. Yeah. Okay. And the manatees, when there's usually only five or six and maybe two or three dolphins, there are dozens of them. They're gravitating towards the positive energy. Right. 
Imagine yes. you can't, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, you can. I, Animal, animals know. Yeah, absolutely. So we wait now, like, you know, patient little slaves, but you know, we're growing out of this slave. I've grown out of the slave mentality for a long time. I used to, you know, follow a guy by the name of Alex Jones. I still like Alex. I still think Alex is a patriot, et cetera. My, my fir very first person that woke me up was uh, none other than George Carlin. And then I, gra I graduated over to, and then I followed him for like 26, 27 years, you know? Uh, and then I graduated onto the, the Q movement. Now, getting back to the, the center, we ended up all of our price structure and we have the lowest prices in out of all the centers around the world. There's 400 of them. They were 75, 85, 90% cheaper in most cases. We made it affordable to the masses because we have a lot of chairs. We can make up our money up on the volume, right? I ended all the price points with 17. Well, wouldn't you know it? All the QAnon people are all coming to my center. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. You know, it's like, it's unbelievable. So I, I'm, I'm about to hire uh, a gentleman who's going to be mostly driver slash cameraman, but he also carries one of these. So he's there to protect my, and I also carry one of these. So I'm, I'm also protecting myself too. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're not that far away from actually hiring this particular gentleman. And I told him, I says, your primary job going forward, Scott, I said, is going to be to keep the cameras rolling at all times. Because there's always people that are flying in from wherever that want to meet me because they follow my show. Mm -hmm. And I'll get sometimes two, three calls in one day. Hey, we got so-and-so here from Wisconsin. We got so-and-so here from Arizona. They want to meet with you. Okay. I just stop everything most times and I, I go because if they're coming from that far, I, you know, I have to pay the respects and go and meet with these people. They're coming from far away. And they're, they're really looking to meet me. Right. So, and we get into these conversations that are so deep and some of these people know more than I do. Right. And then we're losing all of this content. So I said, Scott, you got to have the camera rolling and all the times yeah. we're, we're going to capture all of this stuff as we go. So, so we're, we're transitioning into that where we got something up our sleeve to try and get the pizza guy to blow up to at least a million followers in the next uh, 12 to 24 months. Excellent. Uh, that That's in the works. Uh, we're uh, literally on the 17th of this, of this month coming up in uh, like eight days from today. Uh, we're actually, because I do everything on the 17th. And, you know, it's funny. I have a, my my good friend, Peter Goetz. He's a dear friend. I've known him for about five, six years. And Peter is a numerologist. And he said, anytime you sign a contract or you want to launch a new business, make sure you contact me. I'll tell you exactly when you need to launch. So he said, the 17th is the best date and it's got to be at sunrise. So I'm That's launching a 400,000 commercial campaign over a period of four months in Bavard County, one minute spots, right? On social media to advertise stayingalive.com. So mm -hmm. stayingalive.com is not going to be, probably not going to be too many seats available in the very near future. I can assure you that because we have recognized who our target market is and it is a bullseye. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's going to be cool. You should come down. I mean, you're not that far away. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're planning on sometime in the near future doing a quantum financial system summit. And uh, we're going to do it on stage. We got enough room for, get, get this, 217 chairs. That's exactly when I get rid of all the chairs and sofas and all the lounge chairs and everything. And I put in those little fold-up chairs, which are very comfortable. We fit exactly 217 chairs. I, I, I'm not making this up, Okay. So we would maybe like to have you down at one of these summits where you could speak on stage to the people, maybe a one or two day event. Sure. You know? Yes, yeah, absolutely. I had a great time. I'm going to hold you behind. Do you have any last words for, for our audience? It was a pleasure having you, seriously. Your audience is speaking to the choir, but I can't urge people enough to prepare. Uh, my father taught me when I was very, very young to play chess. And although I don't play now, I understand the game. We have got to be ready from every angle. We've got to try to figure out what they're going to do and always be three steps ahead of them. So prepare. Absolutely. And, and, and don't get, don't get uh, complacent. Right. 
keep pushing the envelope until they say uncle. All right. We got to win this. I mean, you know, look, at the end of the, the, end of the day, uh, uh, communism is not going to set in the United States of America. Do you understand, Jack? Am I, am I, am I getting to you guys out there? I'm mm -hmm. fearless. So, you know, they, <laughs> they know that. By the way, I got to tell you a story that I'm sure the people that follow you don't know. But I, I was an atheist for a very, very long time. Because when, you know, when things are so hosed up for such a long time, and this guy, whoever this guy is, doesn't come down and fix this stuff, you start to doubt. You start to, right? Right. And one day I took a picture, innocently, in the sky. My audience knows this story, but I want to tell you and people who follow you. And I took a picture of what looked to be an XRP logo in the sky. And I sent it to my friend. And I tell the story a million times. And this is probably a million and one times. And it, it's not boring to me. I love, I love the story because it's real. And I take that picture and I sent it to my friend Kathy, who lives here in Florida on the West Coast. And she sends it back to me. She says, yeah. And she circles a face of God. She says, yeah, you forgot this. So wait a minute. The guy that's an atheist takes a picture of the sky and the face of God is next to the XRP logo, which I did believe more at that time in XRP than I believed in God. Yeah. Right? Okay, God, you got me. <laughs> I got to I gotta go sell the XRP to the people. Then God puts me in touch with one of the biggest brokerage firms in the world. This is where the big boys and girls go shopping. Right. This is these are people who pull pull up with tache cases with millions of dollars. And we've had quite a few customers with tache cases with millions of dollars to buy XRP through our broker in the UK. This is where the big boy shop. And I've sold a lot of XRP, a lot to the little people. So I believe right. in the higher power. Yes. Yes, God is real. Definitely. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming again. Please come back and talk to Joe, potentially to come back maybe two days or three days before you guys launch this next documentary on the scam of the IRS. Okay. Thank you for having me, Mel. All right. I'm going to hold you back. Guys, if you like this interview as much as I enjoyed doing it, you know what your job is. Your job is to throw it out there. You know why? Because... This game is either going to be won or lost because you either did your job or you didn't do your job. So do your job. Thank you. We'll get you as much as you want. <laughs>